Welcome to episode six of Conversations with Myself, where we do a deep dive into the original video that I posted on Instagram and Facebook. So if you're ready, let's watch episode six. Before we go into a deep dive on this week's video, I want to do an explanation of why we didn't do a deep dive in episode five last week. And that was in show of support and solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement and the George Floyd protests. So I decided to leave just the video for episode five last week. This week, we're going to dive right back into what I'm doing with the video. And I have the um, Final Cut Pro session open because I've had a couple people ask how you're doing that. So if you're ready, let's dive in over to this. All right, since there's been a number of you that have asked how I do this Brady Bunch style setup, I wanted to show you how I do this multi-track recording. So essentially I take all four videos and line them up underneath of an orange background, uh, take the original recording, from the Logic Pro 10 session and import that into Final Cut Pro. And then I stack the videos on top of each other and I've worked out a crop and transformation setting, which you will find over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the lower right-hand video, which if I select here, you can see which video is highlighted. And I'm coming over here and inside of the transform, section. I have my x-axis and my y-axis set to these pixels. Um, why these pixels? Honestly, I had to do a lot of um, trial and error and manual adjustments, and these are the ones that I settled on. I'm sure there probably could be an even better setup, but this is what works for me because, on quite honestly, these are minute long or less videos that are going to Instagram and Facebook. I'm not looking for movie studio quality by any stretch of the imagination. So these are the settings if anybody is wanting to check them out and copy. So x-axis at 320, y-axis at negative 250. And then to crop, I have 382.2 on the left and then 110 on the top. And then if I just kind of go through all of the rest of these, you can see there's a different setting for each one, but there's some sim similarities to give the nice square cropped look. So this is what I've done inside of the video. And of course, I have a nice little fade out on everything. So let's jump back. And you've already seen my pedal board. So instead of showing you a video of my pedal board, which you've seen there's been no new pedals added, I do want to show you the Logic Pro 10 session of what I did. So let's take a look over here. Inside of the Logic Pro 10 session, this is what we have for the setup. These are the loops that I have used on this particular session. I actually started with the clav in this case when I first put this together and then eventually made my edits and designed it a little bit more started with this clav sound, then went over to a bass sound found, or excuse me, not a bass sound, a bass loop, and started using this bass loop, the distant voices break, blending wah guitar, and then all four of the trumpets with the upper left hand panned pretty hard over to the left, and then the trumpet upper right 
pan again pretty hard over to the right and then lower left not nearly as far but still to the left and the lower right the opposite direction of the lower left and the reason why i set these up is visually when you're looking at the video you kind of want to have your ears um, tuned to the different sides that the visual is representing but we don't want to conflict space with the upper left and the lower left so i'm not panning them as hard there's a few other things that you can do with delay and reverberation to kind of give more separation with that, but there's plenty of other people on YouTube that you can watch for how to mix. And then this is where I had everything mixed um, roughly, and then again, putting on the isotope ozone nine elements to help master just to uh, bring the volume up to negative one dB. Uh, just makes everything bigger and fuller without overloading the system and the sound. And the other thing that I wanted to show inside of this is looking at my automation. Um, every time there was a solo section, I took a volume automation and brought some up. And as you can see, some of them needed a little bit more bringing up while others didn't need very much. And then not only did I put volume automation on, but I also put a pan automation to bring every soloist back to center pan when it was their time to um, come up for the soloist. And then everybody went back to their um, separate pans and volume settings for this everybody go nuts solo section right before the end. Okay, so that's how I have put episode six together. I would love it if you would leave a comment down below on your favorite parts, if you have any questions on how I put all of this together, or if you'd love to jump in and do a conversations with you, I would love to do a collaboration with you also. And make sure that you're hitting that subscribe button down below and that bell that's right next to it lets you know when future videos are coming out. And if you've enjoyed it, please make sure that you share it with other friends and musicians that you think might enjoy. And as always, I'll see you next time.